This video is part of Oligopoly. In it, I'll review some game theory basics. Game theory is a set of tools used by economists, among others, to analyze players' strategic decision-making. A game is an interaction between players, such as individuals or firms, in which players use strategies. We will concentrate on how oligopolistic firms behave within a game. But first, let's look at some game theory basics. The payoffs of a game are the player's valuation of the outcomes of the game. For example, we're talking about profits for firms or utilities for individuals. The rules of the game determine the timing of players' moves and the actions players make at each move. An action is a move that a player makes at a specific stage of a game. A strategy is a battle plan that specifies the action that a player will make based on the information available at each move and for any possible contingency. Strategic interdependence occurs when a player's optimal strategy depends on the actions of others. We will assume that all players are interested in maximizing their payoffs. All players will also have common knowledge about the rules of the game, and each player's payoff depends on the actions taken by all the players. For that reason, there is strategic interdependence. In static games, each player acts simultaneously and only one time. Players have complete information about payoff functions, but imperfect information about rivals' moves. In dynamic games, on the other hand, players move either sequentially or repeatedly. They have complete information about payoff functions, and at each move, they have perfect information about the previous moves of all players. A dominant strategy is a move that provides a higher payoff than any other possible move, regardless of how a player's opponent plays. To understand this, consider the following payoff matrix. This payoff matrix is a table that presents the payoffs for two players, here, you, and your significant other. You have three different moves. You can go to Franklin Street, you can stay at home and read a book, or you can stay at home and bake a pie. Your significant other has two moves. They can go to Franklin or stay at home and study. The numbers in the payoff matrix represent both players' payoffs. On the left of the comma, we see your payoffs. For example, if you stay at home and read a book and your significant other stays at home and studies, your utility will be two utils. The numbers to the right of the commas represent your significant other's payoffs. For example, if you stay at home and bake a pie and they go to Franklin, their payoff will be minus one utils. To determine what your best move should be, first consider the possibility that your significant other will go to Franklin. If your significant other goes to Franklin and you go to Franklin, your payoff will be 10 utils. If you stay at home and read a book, your payoff will be minus two utils. And if you stay at home and bake a pie, your payoff will be minus three utils. So if your significant other goes to Franklin, your best option is to also go to Franklin because that will give you the highest payoff. Now let's figure out your best move if your significant other instead stays at home and studies. If they stay at home and study and you go to Franklin, your payoff is five. If you stay at home and read a book, your payoff is two. And if you stay at home and bake a pie, your payoff is zero. So if you think your significant other will stay at home and study, your best move is to go to Franklin because that move has the highest payoff. What this means is that you have a dominant strategy. You have a move that provides a higher payoff regardless of what your significant other does. You should go to Franklin. Regardless of whether your significant other also goes to Franklin or stays at home and studies, 
Going to Franklin gives you the highest possible payoff and so is your dominant strategy. To see if your significant other also has a dominant strategy, first consider what their payoff looks like if you go to Franklin. If you go to Franklin and your significant other also goes to Franklin, their payoff will be 10. If you go to Franklin and your significant other stays at home and studies, their payoff will be only one. So if your significant other thinks you're going to Franklin, they should also go to Franklin. If your significant other thinks you'll stay at home and read a book and they go to Franklin, their payoff will be minus two utils. If they stay at home and study, their payoff will be two utils. So if your significant other thinks you will stay at home and read a book, their best action is to stay at home and study because it has the higher payoff. If your significant other thinks that you'll stay at home and bake a pie and they go to Franklin, their payoff will be minus one. If they instead stay at home and study, their payoff will be a higher three. So if your significant other thinks you'll stay at home and bake a pie, they should stay at home and study to get the highest possible payoff. What we see here is that your significant other has no dominant strategy. For them, if you go to Franklin, they should go to Franklin. But if you stay at home and either read a book or bake a pie, they should stay at home and study. Your significant other doesn't have one move that provides a higher payoff, regardless of how you play. So if I have a dominant strategy, or if you have a dominant strategy to go to Franklin Street, but your significant other does not have a dominant strategy, how do we expect this game to resolve itself? The dominant strategy solution concept says that all players will play a dominant strategy if and when it exists. All players without a dominant strategy will assume that their opponents are playing their dominant strategies and respond accordingly. So if any player has a dominant strategy, a dominant strategy solution exists. Remember, you have a dominant strategy. Your best move is to go to Franklin. And your significant other knows this. So knowing that you'll go to Franklin, your significant other is also going to go to Franklin because in doing so, they will have the highest possible payoff. The dominant strategy solution, therefore, is one in which both you and your significant other go to Franklin Street. Now let's look at a Nash equilibrium. One prediction of how a game will resolve itself is the Nash equilibrium solution concept. Specifically, a Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies such that no player has an incentive to unilaterally deviate. In a Nash equilibrium, each player is making his or her best choice or best move contingent upon what the other players are doing. And if each player is making the best choice contingent upon what others are doing, then no player has an incentive to change their choice, which means we have an equilibrium or stable outcome. To solve for a Nash equilibrium with a two-player discrete game, first, for player one, find player one's best response for each possible strategy of player two. For player two, find player two's best response for each possible strategy of player one. And then the Nash equilibrium, if it exists, is the set of strategies that are simultaneous best responses. Let's look at an example next. This payoff matrix has two players, player one and player two, each of whom can make two moves, move A and move B. What should player one's move be? Well, if player one thinks that player two will choose move A, then player one should choose move A as well because A has the higher payoff. If player one chooses A, her payoff will be minus six, 
which is more than the minus 9 she'll get from choosing move B. If player 1 thinks player 2 is instead choosing B, then player 1 should choose A. That's because by choosing A, she'll get a payoff of 0, which is higher than the minus 1 she'll get by choosing B. So we see that player 1 has a dominant strategy. Regardless of what player 2 does, player 1 should choose move A. How about player 2? What should his move be? If player 2 thinks player 1 is choosing A, player 2 should choose A as well. That's because by choosing move A, player 2 will get a payoff of minus 6, which is higher than the minus 9 he would have gotten with move B. If player 2 thinks player 1 is choosing B, player 2 should choose A. By choosing A, he gets a payoff of 0, which is higher than the minus 1 he would get by choosing B. Player 2 also has a dominant strategy. Regardless of what player 1 does, it's in player 2's best interest to choose choice A. Here we see that each player choosing A is a Nash equilibrium. We know that because for this cell, both payoffs are underlined, or that this represents the strategy where each player's making their best choice contingent upon what the other's doing. Player 1's choosing A, which is her best choice when player 2 chooses A, and player 2 is choosing A, which is his best choice when player 1 chooses A. So neither player has an incentive to change their move. This is a Nash equilibrium. Finally, let's consider the prisoner's dilemma. This is a category of games in which players have a dominant strategy to cheat which prevents beneficial cooperation from occurring. To see this, consider the payoff matrix with two players, a guy and a girl, each with two moves, one move in which they split some winnings, and the other move in which they steal the winnings from the other player. Pause this video to figure out each player's best move contingent upon the other player's move and determine if this game has a Nash equilibrium. Each of these players does have a dominant strategy. For each player, the dominant strategy is to steal. This means this game has a Nash equilibrium where both players steal. This represents the prisoner's dilemma because each player individually has an incentive to steal, but if they had both agreed to split, then they would have been better off. The Nash equilibrium in this game is not the outcome that maximizes the combined sum of the payoffs. The guy and the girl would be collectively better off by splitting. However, their rational pursuit of self-interests leads each person to take an action or choose a move that ultimately is detrimental to their collective interest they end up with a Nash equilibrium where the combined payoff is less than the payoff from some other outcome.